joy. Joy is an elusive quality for many. Many experience fleeting happiness, but lack abiding joy. When we are happy when our favorite sports team wins, we're happy when the project we're working on turns out well. We're happy when the job is going well, but that happiness can easily disappear if the team does poorly or if the project is ruined or if the job disappears or becomes difficult. Happiness is characterized by good luck or the emotion experienced when in a state of well-being or enjoying or showing pleasure or satisfaction. Happiness may be a part of joy, but joy runs much deeper. John Drescher writes, joy is love smiling. It is love exulting, rejoicing, the echo of pleasant words of love we speak to others and the overflow of happiness we give to others because we have happiness deep within. It is dependent on a relationship with Jesus Christ. It is an inward reality which produces an outward radiance. Paul expresses his joy many times in his letter to the Philippians. In that letter, we discover that Paul had joy regardless of circumstances or people or possessions, power or pressure. Joy is an abiding relationship with Christ. And in doing his will, it is found in that. Mary expressed joy because she had that kind of close abiding relationship with the Lord. The angel Gabriel told her that she was highly favored, that the Lord was with her. God was with her because she sought to live for him. Mary lived a godly life with a desire to please the Lord. Now in submitting to God's will for her, she had joy. In her song of praise, we observe her joy resulted from three things. Three things that we can have too. We have joy because the Lord is caring. Mary saw evidence that the Lord cared for his people. She sings, my soul glorifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior for he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on generations will call me blessed for the mighty one has done great things for me. Holy is his name. He was sending a redeemer. God knew her need and that of all humanity. We sinned. He could have abandoned us to our fate, but he intervened. He was sending his own son to this earth. And he had chosen Mary as his vessel he would use to accomplish this. Knowing that the creator of the universe cares about me individually is a great source of joy. Throughout the Bible, God affirms that he is concerned about our well-being. He sees beyond the immediate to the eternal. He cares about everything that comes into our lives. Now, some wonder why there's pain and suffering if God cares. Pain, suffering, sorrow, they're part of this life because of sin. We suffer because humans are sinful. God permits sinful people and actions to continue to, for a time to give opportunity for more people to repent and put their faith in Christ. Trials and difficulties also serve to build character in us. As James writes, Consider it pure joy, my brothers, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know the testing of your faith develops perseverance. Perseverance must finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, lacking in nothing. God loves us so much that he desires for our character to develop to maturity. A parent allows a child to go through difficulties and trials because it's important to help them grow to maturity. Promising teenager, Joseph became the victim of his brother's jealousy, resulting in slavery. And later, he was the victim of a vindictive woman, resulting in imprisonment. Had God abandoned Joseph? Did he not care about him? On the contrary, God had great plans for Joseph. 
God destined Joseph for leadership and the instrument to save the lives of many. The hardships Joseph experienced served to train him, served to hone his skills in dealing with people, in dealing with management and visioning and decision making. Of course, Jesus, the Son of God, dis demonstrates divine care throughout his ministry. Jesus took time for children, engaging with them and blessing them when others wanted to turn them away, considering them of little importance. When headed to the home of Jairus to heal his daughter, Jesus was touched by a woman who had suffered for years with an issue of blood. Jesus took time to speak with her and validate her worth. When he was being arrested, Jesus took time to heal the ear of the high priest's servant. Mary affirms in her song that God is caring. His concern for a peasant girl confirms his love. His love is a source of joy for Mary. Mary had this joy even when there were uncertainties, when there were many challenges ahead, when many would misunderstand and judge her. The Lord cares for you and me. In this vast universe, he knows us by name. Jesus said that he cares for the birds and that we're much more valuable than they are. Knowing that God cares for us is a reason for joy. We also have joy because the Lord is merciful. Mary recognizes that God is a merciful God. She says, his mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. She had done nothing to deserve the privilege of bearing the Son of God. Sure, she was devoted to the Lord and desired to serve him, but like everyone else, she was not perfect. She was still sinful. She fell short of his perfect holy standard, like every one of us. So Mary recognizes that God is merciful. Further, this statement recognizes God will be merciful to those who fear him to those who put their trust in him. So what is mercy? Well, it is compassion shown to a powerless or helpless person. It is to forgive another person who has no right to it. Jesus told a parable in which a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants um, called them before him. One came before him who, was, who owed millions of dollars the debt was unpayable. Based on the resources of the servant, he would never be able to pay. And so the king ordered the man, his wife, his children, and possessions to be sold to repay the debt. Now, that was the custom of the time. The servant, however, fell before him, begging for time, promising to repay everything. The king was moved by the man's entreaty and showed mercy by canceling the debt. Well, the man was overjoyed. However, later, when the servant failed to show mercy to a fellow servant who owed him a small sum of money, the king rescinded the pardon and proceeded with the original order. And Jesus reminded us through that parable that each of us has received mercy from God. But one of the conditions is that we are merciful in return. Jesus demonstrates that mercy when the Pharisees brought before him an adulterous woman. They reminded Jesus that the law demanded she be stoned to death. Jesus replied to them saying, if any of you is without sin, let him be the first to throw a stone at her. Well, all the accusers eventually walked away. And Jesus asked the woman, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? When she responded that no one had condemned her, Jesus said, Then neither do I condemn you. Go now and leave your life of sin. Jesus, who was perfect and holy, showed mercy to this woman. The mercy of God should give each of us joy. Mary knew she did not deserve anything from God, except judgment, punishment. Likewise, God does not owe us anything. 
We like to blame God for our trials when things go wrong, be it sickness or disease or death, be it the loss of a job or loss of possessions, problems with our neighbors or problems with our family. Typically, we want to blame God. But in reality, we rebelled against God. We chose our own way, and God owes us nothing. As creator, he had every right to eliminate all of us, but instead, he chose mercy. Everything you and I have in terms of blessing is ultimately because of God's mercy. We do not deserve good health, good jobs, good families. We don't deserve freedom or security or opportunity. These, in reality, are ours because of the mercy of God, and thus a reason for joy. And thirdly, we have joy because the Lord is powerful. To perform such a miracle as making a virgin pregnant would take great power, creative power. But such a thing was not too difficult for the creator of the universe. And Mary, in her song, reviews God's powerful acts in history. He has performed mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their inmost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, but he has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things, but has sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful, to Abraham and his descendants forever, even as he said to our fathers. So Mary remembers how God championed the weak, enabling them to defeat the strong. One could go back to Moses, who by God's power led an enslaved Israel to freedom from the world power of that time, Egypt. One could think of Joshua, who by God's power conquered Canaan with a ragtag force of untrained soldiers against trained armies and well-fortified cities. One could think of young David, who trusting in the power of God took on the giant Goliath, defeating him. Catherine Tzu was born in 1914 in Fuzhou, South China. Raised in a Christian home, Su wanted to be a doctor. Growing up, she had seen the devastating effects of these diseases such as typhoid and diphtheria and tuberculosis, which took the lives of her siblings. She prayed that God would provide a way for her to become a doctor. She promised that if he did, she would make her practice a ministry without charge to her patients. Well, God answered her. And Sue won a full scholarship to Peking Union Medical College, one of three applicants accepted. Because her siblings died from tuberculosis, Sue made that disease her primary focus. Eventually, she established a clinic in Houston, Texas, for the prevention and treatment of tuberculosis. Today, her pioneered tuberculosis prevention strategies are replicated around the world. This is not my own achievement, but what God has wrought by his mighty power, she wrote in 1994 after receiving the coveted Distinguished Achievement Award. And true to her word, Catherine Tzu has not charged a patient in more than 50 years. What you cannot do, God will work out for you, Sue says. Then you become an instrument in God's will. That is a great privilege. It is when we are dependent on the Lord that he can work through us to do great things. As Philippians 4.13 says, I can do everything through him who gives me the strength. And when we experience God working in and through our lives to provide for us or to use us in his service, we have great joy. Yes, Jesus came to this earth to bring us joy. He is the source of joy. We can experience that joy because the Lord is caring, because he is merciful, and he is powerful. Jesus, who for the joy that awaited him left heaven's glory, became a helpless child, grew up to maturity, ministered among us, and then died on the cross so that we might be redeemed from sin and brought into a relationship with our Creator as he desired from the start. Jesus gives us an everlasting joy. As Peter wrote, Though you have not seen him, you love him. 
And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. That joy is ours by faith. So trust the Lord and experience the joy of Jesus in your life. God bless you.